This episode is sponsored by Ground News. You ever look at a bird and think, man, that guy looks mad. This is not the case for most birds, sure, but some just seem to have, like, murder in their eyes. Of course, we all know that this is a classic case of us projecting our human expectations onto an animal that is different from us. But still, did I say something that offended that one? Now, hornbills may have slightly softened that intense stare with some absolutely fabulous eyelashes, but that only gets you so far. These birds, with their big old beaks and often bigger old casks on top of those beaks, certainly make it easy to remember their dinosaur origins. But I'm going to try to not let their appearance intimidate me, because at the end of the day, their real defining feature may be their role as interspecies besties with mongooses. The Bizarre Beasts Pin Club is open for subscriptions for the whole month. If you sign up by August 20th, the first pin you get will be one of these gorgeous hornbills. Hornbills are any of the 62 species in the family Bucerodidae, plus the two species that make up the entire family, Bucorvidae, the ground hornbills. You can think of hornbills kind of like the African or Asian version of the toucans. Hornbills and toucans are both big, omnivorous tropical birds with similar color patterns and huge, recognizable beaks who can chalk up all their similarities to the fact that both groups convergently evolved to fill the same ecological niche, just on different sides of the world. Hornbills live from rainforests to savannas and range in size from 30 centimeters and 84 grams in the smallest arboreal species to 100 centimeters and 6.2 kilograms in the largest ground species. And much like their Central and South American analogs, the toucans, hornbills eat fruit, bugs, and small vertebrates, which they easily grab with their long, downward curving bills. As you might expect, their gigantic beaks actually stick out into their field of vision, but as much as that might sound like it would be an obstacle, it might actually allow them to have extra control. Hornbills have binocular vision, which gives them decent depth perception, so coupling that with a visible bill tip means they have pretty good beak dexterity. Their sharp eyesight is also helped by those eyelashes we mentioned, which are actually modified feathers that provide shade from the sun. So there's at least part of their signature look explained. Birds like hornbills evolved excellent eyesight, not eye expressiveness. Functionality first. The other big component of their signature look look gives them the horn part of their name. It's not actually a horn, but it's a thing called a cask on top of many species' bills. The cask, which means helmet in French, is a mostly hollow growth on top of the beak and occasionally skull of a hornbill, and it's made out of keratin, like your hair and fingernails and their feathers. Hollow keratin instead of solid bone makes the cask lightweight but strong. It's still enough extra bulk, though, that the hornbill's first two neck vertebrae are fused in order to support it. So why does this thing exist? Well, it serves a lot of different purposes depending on the species. Some, like the helmeted hornbill, great hornbill, and Indian gray hornbill, use their cask for fighting. Other species seem to use it as a resonating chamber to amplify their songs and calls. And judging by the sounds of just a few, like the black and white casked hornbill, rhinoceros hornbill, and black hornbill, It sounds like it's working. Casks might also be useful for strengthening the beaks of hornbills, helping them keep cool, and even aiding in mating displays. But their casks are just one outward expression of their weirdness. What makes these guys really bizarre is their propensity for very unique cooperative behavior. First off, Hornbill nesting requires serious teamwork between mates. All hornbill species nest inside of cavities in trees or rock faces, but aside from the two ground hornbill species, this process also involves some major additional security. The female lays her eggs in the chosen cavity, and then she and her mate seal her in with a wall of makeshift cement. More like the cask of Amontillado, <laughs> am I right? And because they are birds, that cement is, of course, mainly poop and mud. The female then stays inside for weeks on end until the eggs hatch, while the male forages and feeds her through a tiny opening left in the wall. The female is more or less helpless during this time. She may even molt all of her flight feathers at once as soon as she finishes laying her eggs, so she relies on the male to keep her and the eggs safe while she incubates them. In some species, the female and chicks stay walled in for the whole process, while in others, the female busts out after her chicks have developed a bit. The chicks rebuild the wall, and then the female helps the male forage for 
for them until they fledge. Hornbills don't just work with other hornbills, though. For instance, black hornbills follow gibbons around to catch whatever bugs the apes incidentally disturb. Behavior like this benefits hornbills, but doesn't really affect the gibbons, making it an example of commensalism. Yellow-casked hornbills, meanwhile, take a more active neighborly role with the Diana monkeys they live around. They actually learned all the subtle differences between the monkeys' alarm calls. The hornbills then raise their own alarm according to which threat the monkeys have made them aware of. In one study, the hornbills added their own calls in response to the monkeys' eagle warnings, but not when the danger was leopards, since the latter isn't a relevant threat to hornbills. So while you could argue that learning the monkey calls here is more of a self-serving behavior for the hornbills, there is still some mutual benefit to be had. Because generally, the more prey species there are making a fuss about a predator, the less likely that predator is to get the drop on any of them. So these hornbills are at least contributing to everyone's broader project of not getting eaten by eagles. A couple other hornbill species take the watch out for predators thing a step further by fully teaming up with the species they tail. Von der Decken's hornbill and the eastern yellow-billed hornbill both follow dwarf mongooses as they hunt for bugs and small vertebrates. Just like the black hornbills and their gibbon associates, these hornbills catch whatever small critters escape the mongooses, often including prey species they would otherwise be unable to find on their own. The mongooses, in turn, benefit from a literal bird's-eye view of their surroundings for predator patrol. The hornbills use their superior eyesight to keep a lookout, and alert the mongooses to sightings of raptors sooner than the mongooses themselves spot the danger. In fact, they do it so thoroughly that the mongooses mostly don't bother with their own alarm calls when the hornbills are present. The birds even go so far as to only sound warnings for the mongooses' predators and not for other predator species, possibly as a learned response from spending so much time around their mammalian colleagues. Having hornbill sentinels also frees up more of the mongooses to forage when they otherwise would have been stuck keeping watch themselves. This mutualistic relationship is so well established that if the mongooses wake up before the hornbills arrive, they'll get pretty anxious about starting without them. And if the hornbills arrive first and get impatient waiting for the mongooses to come out, they will force the issue with a loud wake-up call delivered straight into the mongooses' termite mound. It's a partnership between vastly unrelated species that's rarely found in nature. But hornbill mutualism can even span whole ecosystems. Systems. Eating fruit might not at first seem like an obvious example of mutualism, but animals eating, moving, and pooping does so much more to disperse seeds than a stationary plant could manage on its own. And in their specific habitats, hornbills seem to play an extra impactful role. Researchers found wreathed hornbills to be the forest's most effective seed spreaders, at least within the parameters of their one hectare study. More interestingly, hornbill foraging movements were influenced by the presence of specific fruits in the canopy, meaning that different tree species were indirectly responsible for one another's success at spreading, thanks to their abilities to attract hornbills. That makes these birds a critical part of the feedback loop of plant diversity in the places where they live. In fact, this seed-spreading action by hornbills may even be how so many plant species got to be in some of their modern ranges in the first place. You can call it pooping for the greater good. From the savannas of South Africa to the rainforests of Papua New Guinea, hornbills bring their helmeted charisma all across the African and Asian tropics. Sure, they may share that bizarre bird quality of resting Sam the Eagle face, but behind that piercing gaze is a devoted partner and parent, an engaged community member, and a prolific forest gardener. It just goes to show that many beasts are more than meets the really intense eye. You can sign up for the pin club at bizarrebeastsshow.com and help keep this channel going and also get amazing pins. If you want a hornbill to be your first pin, sign up by August 20th. And now, for some bonus facts. If you didn't get enough of the hornbill mongoose cuteness earlier, we've got you covered because there are plenty more bizarre details about that already incredible mutualistic behavior. One weird thing about these unlikely allies is that they eat almost all of the exact same prey as one another, so you'd think that they'd be in direct competition rather than working together. Stranger still, even though both hornbill species routinely kill and eat mammals larger than the juvenile mongooses they hunt alongside, they don't ever try to eat their young foraging friends. Despite being 
being after one another's food, or even potentially being one another's food, the bird and mammal team chooses to cooperate. That said, hornbills do pick the youngins up and throw them out of the way to try and steal food, so their cooperation doesn't require that they be nice about it. I mean, anybody with an older sibling can probably relate to this particular mongoose experience. I had to guard my fries very carefully. And when an adult mongoose wants to make a hornbill back off, it does so using the communication methods reserved for other mongooses, not the behaviors for getting rid of a different species rival. The mutualism dynamic plays out more like one big messy family than like totally unrelated species just trying to tolerate each other. Which might explain why one research team observed a group of young mongooses trying to play with a hornbill even though the bird was not having it. Don't worry, little mongoose. Grumpy Big Brother Hornbill may not want to wrestle, but he'll still do his best to keep you from getting carried off by a hawk. When it comes to a topic as nuanced and complex as animal behavior, it's easy to get overwhelmed with headlines that trade accuracy for a sensational narrative. But that's where this episode's sponsor, Ground News, can help. Ground News gathers related articles from around the world in one place with context about the source's political leaning, reliability, and ownership, so you can compare coverage and quickly understand the full story. For example, they compiled over 71 sources reporting on this new study of wild orcas potentially trying to form a new kind of interspecies relationship by offering food to people. Most of these articles came from left-leaning sources, leaving a pretty big blind spot for anyone who relies mostly on right-leaning sources for news about this kind of ecological research. Plus, Ground News lets you compare and contrast how different outlets frame the exact same story. In this case, one headline raises the question of whether the orcas might be trying to make friends with or even manipulate us humans, while another just suggests they're simply trying trying to learn who we are. Ground News gathers a range of different perspectives to help you understand the bigger picture behind every news story in science and beyond. They've even been recognized by the Nobel Peace Center for their impact on media literacy, which is exactly why we use Ground News as well. Get 40% off the unlimited access Vantage plan by scanning this QR code, going to ground.news BB, or by clicking the link in the description so you don't miss out on important stories.